with our graduates some type of advice as they go on their new path. And I was sitting at my office, jotting down all the important things that I thought that you needed to know. And I thought, how can I fit that in 15 minutes? Um, and so I started to think, and, and then I listened to a talk by Margaret Hefferman, a TED talk. And her story reminded me of why I became a doctor. And it also reminded me of why we become doctors and what we want to do. So instead of giving you a list today of all the things that you need to know to make it at your next path, I think this story would be the best thing for you, Dr. Singh, and for many of you, about why we do what we do, and hopefully empower some of you as well to continue to move on with your degrees, your education. In the 1950s, there was a very unusual woman. Her name was Alice Stewart. Why was she unusual? Well, in Britain in 1950, she was a female doctor and that was unusual. But she was also very young. She was one of the youngest female doctors there. And to top it off, when she got married, she kept working. That wasn't normal in the 1950s in Britain. And when she had kids, she kept working, which was not normal. And when she got divorced, she kept working. So this was not normal, a cultural norm for a woman in the 1950s. But Alice was a medical doctor and she wanted to make her mark. She wanted to make a difference. And she knew that she had to find a problem and solve it, which might sound very familiar to many of you doctors, because that's what we do in our research studies. And so she started to think about what she could do to make her mark. And so she picked a doozy. She, she didn't pick anything easy. She thought, you know what? Right now in the 1950s, we have a high death rate of children from cancer. So I'm going to research that. That's a tough research question, even today. So she got a small little grant and she knew she had one chance, one chance to research this and one chance to make a difference. So she created this survey and sent it out. And something that was unique is that typically in that time they found that usually children who were dying, it was because of poverty. But in this case, children that had cancer were coming from affluent families that were wealthy. So she sent out a little research survey and she asked every question because she had no idea where to start. So there were questions like, did they eat candy? Where did they sleep? Did they have indoor plumbing? She had no idea. As these research surveys started to come back, something popped out at them that every researcher would dream to have, a very specific answer on every survey. Every woman who had a child that either had cancer or had died for cancer at this time in the 1950s had gotten an x-ray when they were pregnant. So it was this giant clarity that they realized that x-ray machines, when women were pregnant, were giving the children cancer. Now during this time, one child a day was dying from cancer in the 1950s. So this information was so exciting, but there was a problem. What Alice found out went against the cultural norms. In that time in 1950s, doctors didn't harm you, they were there to hurt you. So how could that be happening? And the x-ray technology was new and people were excited about it. And they couldn't think that x-ray would hurt you. How could it hurt a child? How could it give you cancer? But despite that, Alice knew that she had to publish her findings. These were so important. So she went and she published them. People were very excited. They talked about the Nobel Peace Prize. And Alice thought, I need to go and research as many children with cancer as I can because before you know it, we're gonna stop doing x-rays on pregnant women and there's not going to be any children dying from cancer. So, you know, she's going to rush to research all these children, but little did Alice know that it wasn't going to be until 25 years later that they would start implementing not X-raying pregnant women. So she had a really big battle on her hands. And as we know, uh, Alice was a very unusual person, and so she was willing to fight that fight for the next 25 years. She continued to research. She continued to publish. And as the story says, she didn't like to fight, but she was really good at it. And she would fight those people who contested her, and she would keep going until eventually, as many of you may know, if you've gone in, especially women, to get an x-ray, they ask you if you're pregnant. Because they know, now from Alice Research, that's not something that they can do. And the reason I share this story with you is because what I really love about Alice and what it reminded me about me and you as you go on your journey is that we have to dare to disagree. 
not with bad stuff, but with the things that we know need to change in our culture. Our country was built on people who were willing to disagree and willing to go against the cultural norms to create some of the most amazing things that we see today, from technology to medicine to planes flying in the air. And it always amazes me when a plane gets off the ground because that's a ton of metal. So when I thought about this story and I thought about you saying, I thought, you know, we're doctors, but sure, doctors, you're working towards getting that next new job or maybe a great pay raise, but, but really, we don't go through this rigorous process just for that. We want to make a difference in our field. We want to dare to disagree, and we want to go against the cultural norm and make a change. So when I thought about what I can impart to you today, of all the long list things I came up with, the best thing I thought of that I could give to you today is to say, dare to disagree, dare to change your community, dare to change your country, dare to change your world, because that's why we do what we do. Thank you. Thank you.